Stalwart citizens of Oceania, guardians of Airstrip 1, Big Brother has unleashed new stocks of victory gin upon you for all of the work that you have done so far in the factories. <laughs> I'm talking today about 1984, the 1948 novel by George Orwell that depicts a future nightmare dystopia um, in which uh, all thought is monitored by the thought police. Young members of the Virgins League are actually uh, randy co-eds who want to have their way with you in the woods uh, where there's no microphones. It's a bleak nightmare story from a bleak nightmarish time about a bleak nightmarish future. Uh, as I often like to remind people, if you want to know who will control the future, ask yourself who controls the past. That's some Zach de la Rocha for you, courtesy of 1984. George Orwell, one of my favorite authors of all time. Uh, I actually became really obsessed with him in high school, uh, kind of angsty, cliche thing, but I, I, it holds true. I think his writing is fantastic. Fought in the Spanish Civil War against the fascists, uh, had his throat shot out. Tough guy, man. Gotta love that really believed in what he believed in, really uh, stood up for something. Our main character, Winston, toils away creating propaganda and pornography, opiates himself, uh, and satiates his mind by drinking copious amounts, huge amounts of victory gin, which from its description, it's pretty clear isn't gin. It is an oily, pungent liquor that tastes, uh, according to the book, of Chinese rice spirit, um, and so on. So I thought, let's make a Victory Gin Martini. It sounds delicious. So today on How to Drink, we're gonna make the Victory Gin Martini using no gin whatsoever. Um, I am kind of making this one up as I go along, so I don't know how it's gonna be. I don't even know if I want it to be very good. I want it to be accurate to the description. To make this drink, the first thing you're going to need is uh, some juniper berries. Now, those are in short supply these days, but if you had a uh, access to a cache of pre-war groceries, you might find them at a finer grocery store. Of course, uh, the embargo makes it difficult, uh, but if you can get your hands on some juniper berries, that will go a long way in preparing your Victory Gin Martini. These are dried, and so I'm gonna add, you know, a fair amount. I'm gonna cover the bottom of my shaker in these dried juniper berries. Uh, I need two ounces of a neutral grain spirit. Truth be told, I did consider using um, Everclear or a watered down Everclear or something like that, uh, but vodka will be fine here. Uh, Everclear would be a mistake uh, because you would end up, I would to do, use vodka, Everclear or something, I would just have to add water to it anyway, which would just bring it back to um, basically vodka. Thematically, it's a fun idea, but it seems silly and I don't even really want to, I don't want to encourage you to drink Everclear. Yum. Now we're going to need some Kaoling wine. Um, I have to confess, the description of Victory Gin in 1984 uh, was perilously close to describing my experience for the first time with this particular bottle of Kaoling. Kaoliang? It might be Kaoliang. Uh, Taiwanese people, uh, Chinese people, uh, Asian people. Please forgive me, my pronunciation. I, I am doing my best, but I would say it's Kaoliang or Kaoling. Um, this is uh, distilled from sorghum. Uh, actually, on the back it says distilled from 20, 82% sorghum, 18% wheat. Uh, and they call it Kaoling wine. It's obviously not wine. Um, it's, uh, this is rocket fuel. Um, it certainly tastes like industrial waste as far as I'm concerned, so it's definitely the right stuff to use here. We're gonna use it kind of like our vermouth. I think I was gonna do a whole ounce, but I think a whole ounce is gonna be fucking miserable to drink. Half an ounce of this would be great. Uh, I like <laughs> I like my Victory Gin Martinis a little dry, so I just use a half an ounce. If you like a particularly wet Victory Gin Martini, you could in scale that up, but I think you'll find a half an ounce goes a long way in this drink, um, especially if you're talking about the exact same product I'm talking about, which is this lovely little number right here. And uh, so we've got our uh, ingredients in there. I'm gonna muddle these a little bit, this dried junipers. Um, anything we can do to kind of help them express is not wasted effort. Those junipers are gonna float um, on the surface. 
Uh, so when you muddle them, you're going to drive them to the bottom and then crack them against the bottom. Now, I don't know how your contraband stockpile looks, but if you have it, a little orange bitters here will really brighten this drink. I like two dashes. Oh, that smells <laughs> way better than I was expecting it to smell, actually. I'm a little bit disturbed. This might actually come out delicious. Some martinis are stirred, but a Victory Gin Martini properly made uh, in this formulation should be shaken. You really want to aerate this. Uh, we, it's gonna help get more out of those dried juniper berries. I suppose if you had fresh juniper berries, that would change the thing. Uh, you could also soak your, you could do like an infusion of juniper. Um, I like to do these kinds of things on the fly, all in the glass, you know? Uh, I always put one whole cube. One Caraca cube. That looks like something good for the for the government there. That's, Big Brother would approve. Although I did put that, that orange bitters in there. I don't know. It might be contraband. It might be for the party only. Inner inner party only. Might have accidentally made something good here. Take your martini glass. I think standard fare would be in order here. I'm going to double strain this. I don't want to have any juniper in my drink. Uh, if your juniper doesn't crack or something, I mean, it might not be necessary, but I, I'm almost certain that we're going to find plenty of little juniper bits here. Well, that looks very appetizing. I wasn't quite expecting the juniper to have so much color. Really want to get it all out. You know, worked hard for this lovely little beverage. If you have access to them, garnish this with some olives for sure. Uh, I like three. I mean... The more the merrier, because they're really gonna make this drink work. That brine is gonna cut it. So, uh oh. Oh darn. Maybe just put them in there like that. Yeah, there we go. Okay, wish me luck. I'm drinking this. Um, full disclosure, I have never made this before. I am just going on thematic elements here. This might be poison. Doesn't smell that bad, honestly. It smells pretty good. Juniper. I mean, it, obviously, it looks like swamp water. I mean, it looks really bad. I understand. I'm, I'm with you. That's Victory Gin, baby. That's pretty good. Okay, it has a weird aftertaste. There's no question. Oh, I mean, like, that Kyaling is powerful flavor. I really thought I was going to retch when I drank this. That is... I mean, visually, very unappealing. Um, I think that maybe we could put it in another glass if you want to be serious about it, but not only does that taste pretty good, that tastes pretty much like what it should taste like in the book, but as, like, you know, nice a version of that as you can imagine. It is oily. It is industrial and weird tasting. It does sort of taste like gin in a sideways way. Uh, the juniper is there. Um, it has that, like, funky, weird chemical, <laughs> honestly. Uh, somewhat doctor's office-y, but not too doctor's office-y. Um, Kaoling thing, like, that Kaoling stuff is... Man, that's a flavor, man, if you drink that straight. That is unreal. Um, but here it's actually cut and moderated pretty well. Honestly, I'm not joking. The plan for the bit at the end was that I was going to be like, It's great! I love Big Brother. But actually, this is not undrinkable. It is visually the least appealing thing I've ever drank in my life. I, di I did it. I've created a Victory Gin Martini. Could I make it more traditionally delicious? Uh, yeah, but I'd probably have to take the Kao Ling out of it, which would kind of not make it what I want it to be. I mean, like, Victory Gin isn't supposed to be good. This is drinkable. This is as good as bad could be. We gotta see how the olives taste now that they've been soaked in my delicious looking Victory Gin. Different. Some wet dog aspect there. The olive is interesting. It kind of eventually overtakes the, the wet dogness of it. In some ways the drink is better than the olives. It's a weird one, guys. It's a weird one. 
But I'm pretty sure Big Brother would approve uh, and rate this drink uh, like double plus good. So come on down to the Chestnut Tree Cafe and have yourself a glass of Victory Gin Martini. Um, or if you are really at the end of your rope, we could put some cloves in it. That's a bad idea though, probably. I think cloves would be a mistake here. Well, that's how to drink the show about making cocktails and how to drink them. And this week I made a Victory Gin Martini using no gin whatsoever. Um, I'm pretty pleased with it. It does not taste like gin. I mean, it tastes like a Victory Gin Martini. And I'm on Twitter at How to Drink. I'm on Instagram at How to Drink. I'm on Patreon at patreoncom slash How to Drink. Um, <clears throat> and I'll see you later this week with a regular episode of the show. I'll see you next week with uh, another couple of episodes and uh, maybe something in between. Um, I'm doing my best. Our boys are keeping the peace in Eurasia. Um, I gotta pee. Listen, I'm gonna leave you with a thought. It's better than you think.